Hey guys, welcome to another video. And today I want to talk about how my friend and I found a way to auto solve problems in MathQuest and the journey we embarked on to find uh, this trick. Uh, before we start, I just want to uh, notify you guys that this video will be heavily related to uh, coding. So this video may not be for you if you don't like the more uh, computer technical stuff. But if you still want to know the trick, you can skip forward into the video. Well, anyways, it all started when my friend and I were talking about MathQuest speedruns uh, a few days ago. Um, in the picture, if you look at the screenshot here, my friend brought up the topic of auto-solving the problems, and this piqued my interest. Uh, so we started investigating into this matter. So. To start, we had to look into the intricacies of the MathQuest code. Uh, if you look at the screenshot here, we had to find this JavaScript file called MathQuest.js, and uh, we kind of formatted it to uh, make it easier on us. Um, but still, there were more than 50,000 lines of code. Uh, but the good thing is that we've quickly found out that most of the code was actually irrelevant to the actual game logic. Once we pinpointed uh, where the actual game logic lies, we started to sift through the code. Of course, uh, we found the game logic, but there are still thousands upon thousands of lines of code that we still needed to go through manually. Uh, and we naturally stumbled upon some very interesting tidbits of information that we wouldn't be aware of if we weren't looking through into the game code. Uh, for example, if you look at this screenshot here, we stumbled upon some code for enemies that likely does not exist in the game. We even stumbled upon some dialogue for a character that we have we never encountered before in our playthrough of the game. Um, this character looks very interesting. Uh, as you can see here, uh, you all like learn 3x the amount of skill points during the battle or your walking speed will temporarily increase by five. Seems like a really interesting uh, idea, but we never encountered it before. Probably isn't even in the game, but anyways. We even found this secret math quest link that shows the leaderboard. Uh, not very helpful, but it's still pretty cool. Uh, well, that was pretty interesting and all, but we still weren't making any headway on this problem. That is, until I found this. The code you're looking at right now is used to create random problems during battles. Um, it's called getProb, uh, so it's pretty obvious that they're getting a problem, a random problem. You can look into this code yourself if you are curious. Um, just go to line uh, 18,512 in the formatted JavaScript file. Uh, but anyways, if you're not interested in that, Basically what is happening here is that the code is using the amount of power-ups a player has used and how many power-ups the player has at the moment to determine what difficulty the problem should be. This makes sense because as you progress further into the game, you expect it, the problems to become harder. Power-ups are a great way of uh, tracking how far the player is in the game. So therefore, the more power-ups you have and have used, the more difficult the problem should be. And as you can see here, there's also some code for generating random numbers. Uh, obviously, the problems have to be generated randomly. Uh, so that's what it's doing here. This math.random uh, with the parentheses, that's what it's doing. Um, as you can see in the screenshot, uh, the a.pup and a.pup used variables, uh, which are underlined in the screenshot, represent how many power-ups the player has and how many power-ups the player used, respectively. Um, anyways, now based on these uh, like po this uh, power-up logic and uh, some other conditions, the code will decide whether to output a division, multiplication, subtraction, or addition problem, as indicated by the arrows in the screenshot. If you look at the code really closely, though, 
uh, especially at these underlying parts right here, it starts to become clear that the variable a.an actually stores the answer to the problem. If we can find a way to access this variable for every problem, then we got the answer for each problem. After some digging around, I found this stack overflow post that seemed like a promising start. Essentially, I could add a breakpoint at the end of the getProb function, which will stop code execution upon reaching that point. Then I can print out the answer in the console and resume the code execution so I can actually solve the problem. So I just wanted to show an example of how you would use uh, breakpoints to be able to print out the answer in MathQuest. So first thing you want to do, obviously, is to load MathQuest and log into your account. Um, and the next thing you want to do is that uh, I'm on Chrome, so I'm going to be opening the Chrome developer tools. But, uh, but you may not have Chrome you still may be able to apply some similar steps to be able to do the exact same thing uh, that I'm doing, uh, but just adapt it to whatever browser you're using. Um, but in any, anyways, uh, what you're gonna do if you're on Chrome is to right click anywhere on the screen and press the inspect button uh, on this menu here. And this will uh, show pop up a menu on the right side of your screen uh, you can also open this menu by using Control plus Shift plus I. So if you press all those three buttons on your keyboard at once, it'll also pop up the screen. Or you can also press F12 on your keyboard. And the next thing you'll do is to first notice that there are all these tabs on the top, like Elements, Console, Sources, Network, and so on. Uh, the tab that you want to switch to is Sources. So click on the Sources tab. And this will switch to this like long list of like uh, cloud icons and like these uh, different types of HTML files um, and CSS files. And what you want to do here is go to this top file right here that says www.roomrecess.com and uh, expand that file. And it will show these different options, uh, these different uh, folders here. And you want to open the file, the folder that says mobile slash MathQuest. And you just want to click the arrow on the on the left hand side. And then you'll see that there is a file named mathquest.js. You want to open that file here. Um, and you'll see that it's a bunch of like uh, gibberish if you don't know what JavaScript is. So what you want to do is press this button, uh, pretty print this minified file, press pretty print. And this will show, this will open up a formatted uh, JavaScript file for you. Uh, you just have to wait for a little bit. And as you can see, here is the uh, formatted uh, code here. And what you want to do next is that you want to find the get prop function. So the quickest way to do this is to press Control and then F. And this tiny little menu will pop up down here. What to do? What you're gonna do is just type in get prop right here, and you want to find a one that is on line 18,512. So as you can see, this is the correct one, and the other two, the other two, like the one in like fight setup, like 12,000 uh, lines of code, or this other one at 13,000. Uh, these are not the correct ones. You have to find one at this one specifically at 18,512 lines of code. And what you're going to do next is that you're just, just going to scroll down to line uh, 18,555 uh, and click here. And this blue arrow, this like blue arrow kind of thing will show up. Um, this indicated that I placed a breakpoint here. And if you go to the very right hand side over here, you can see that uh, in the breakpoints list here, you can see that in fact I have placed a breakpoint here. So this is how you confirm that you placed a breakpoint. So, uh, so with that out of the way, uh, you just want to start an encounter. So just walk around and see if you can find any enemies that you can fight. 
Um, so just walk around. I'm just going to walk around a little bit and uh, see if there's enemies that I can fight here to uh, showcase this um, example here. And as you can see, I got attacked here, but it just stopped the code because I placed a breakpoint here. And now that the code stopped, um, what you want to do next is you go to the council, console, which is at the bottom of the screen. Over here it says console. And you go to the newest line, the most bottom line here, where there's a blue right arrow right here at the bottom of my screen. Um, I'm just going to type in console.clear to, to clear the whole console, but you don't have to do this. Uh, this is just to make everything cleaner so you can see it easier. Um, and what you want to type is console.log and then a.an. Uh, remember, we said that a.an is the answer to the problem, uh, which is in this case the first problem that we're going to get here. And as you can see, the answer is going to be 11. So let's just see if this is the case here. If we go over here uh, where my cursor is and it says resume script execution, uh, if we press that button, you can see that 5 plus, 5 plus 6 is 11, which is what is printed out here. So if we just press 11 um, and the code stops again because we got a new problem. So if we just uh, do the exact same thing, um, we'll see that the next one will be 15. So if we just resume again, 15, and there we go. That, that's how you use breakpoints to be able to get the correct answer. Well, that breakpoint uh, trick was pretty cool and all, but it was also a pretty annoying process as well. Maybe we can do something even better, uh, maybe something more automated. The fact is, we actually can do that. We realized that to automate this even further, we need to find a function that actually takes in the key press inputs. That is, what keys you're pressing on your keyboard. The function that you're currently look, seeing on the screen is that function. This function is ran every single time you press a key during a battle, whether that be a number or a spell hotkey. If you look even closer at the code, especially at these two lines of code underlined in the screenshot, you can actually see some of the same variables showing up in both the getProp function and this function as well. You can even see the variable a.an at one point. In fact, these two underlined lines of code actually check if the player typed in the correct answer or not. The first underlined line of code checks if you typed in the correct amount of digits. For example, if the problem was 5 plus 5, the game expects you to type in two digits, while for a problem like 5 minus 0, you would only be expected to type in one digit. The second underlying line of code checks if the actual answer typed in is correct. Once we figure this out, we, can, we figured that we can simply trick the code into thinking we are getting the problems correct by editing these uh, underlying lines of code. So I just want to show you how you can uh, actually edit a JavaScript file um, of a website and uh, trick the code into thinking that we're actually getting the problems correct. Um, so what I'm going to do first is open up the developer tools, the Chrome developer tools. Um, as I said before, you may have to uh, adapt these steps uh, for your own uh, browser if, if you don't use Chrome. But uh, anyways, let's continue. Um, so first thing you want to do is that don't open the formatted file because the problem with the Chrome developer tools is that uh, you can't actually edit the JavaScript file if it is formatted. So you have to edit the unformatted file. So this is the unformatted file. Um, as you can see, it's just text upon text on upon text, um, and it's really confusing. But uh, we can use the Control F command um, to find specific keywords. And for this one, we want to find the, um, we want to paste in this uh, type in like this uh, phrase right here. 
this dot place in number and two equal signs, this dot digits. And it should only have one match. And, and this should be the match right here. And you want to replace all of this with the word true. So I should now say if, and it's uh, followed by uh, true inside parentheses. And then what you want to do next is keep on scrolling to the right with the right arrow key uh, until you reach the next if statement right here. Um, so once you hit another if right here, uh, what you want to do is uh, start, uh, you have to delete everything in the parentheses here. So if you can look on the screen right here, there are two parentheses underlined. Um, you want to delete everything inside uh, this parentheses pair and replace it with true. So I'll just do that right now and replace everything here with true. And um, you have to actually save the JavaScript file in order for it to have an effect. Uh, so just press Control and then S to save the JavaScript file. Um, and once you do, you have to wait a little bit uh, before the effect of the JavaScript file uh, actually takes place. As you can see, the game's actually frozen right now. But if we wait a little bit, um, it will uh, be able to uh, work again. So if we just close this and just wait a little bit. And it's working now, it looks like. So let me just walk around um, and try to get into counter. And uh, to really see the effect, I'm just going to switch. I'm just going to unequip this um, and equip a weaker weapon. Like the flaming fish for it, that's a pretty weak weapon. Uh, and just walk around. As you can see, I'm literally solving the problems really quickly. Um, I, I literally destroyed that uh, angry wolf in like uh, like three seconds. And all I'm doing is just holding down the space bar. Um, you can actually hold down any key, uh, but uh, any key works. But once you just hold it down, you're literally just destroying. Like it doesn't even matter. And it's dead. So that's actually a pretty cool trick. So if you do those changes, just wait for like maybe 10 to 30 seconds maximum. Um, uh, it'll actually work out fine and you can actually hold down any key and destroy <laughs> any single enemy, every single enemy that you face. Okay, so that was a pretty amazing trick, but you still need to do something in order to defeat an enemy. Namely, holding down a key. But what if there was a way to do nothing, but still be able to automatically solve all the problems? Sadly, my friend and I could not find a reliable way to do this. If we find something new, I will be sure to post an update on my channel. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.